Awesome, thanks. So, uh, yeah, thanks for the intro and thanks for the warm welcome. My name is Agnes um, uh, and I'm here to talk to you about that framework or a better way to build desktop flows in Power Automate, basically. Um, so a quick intro into myself. I'm uh, Agnes. Uh, I run an agency that specializes in press automation uh, and improvement. Um, I'm fairly knowledgeable about Power Automate, especially desktop flows, um, Microsoft Business Applications MVP since this year, and I'm also the author of, of the PAD framework that I'm going to be uh, showing you today. Right. Uh, the agenda, fairly straightforward, a couple of slides to just kind of explain to you what a framework in, in the sense of Power Automate should look like, and then I'll, I'll switch to a demo where I show you what that actually looks like in, in practice, and then I'll share a few key takeaways at the end. Right, so a framework uh, for uh, flows of any kind essentially is, is like a, a template that we use to build flows. That should include certain, you know, frequently used uh, standardized functionalities. And essentially, when we have that, when we use it, uh, it has several benefits. Essentially, first of all, it means that we have, you know, all of our flows will follow the same standardized structure, which in turn means that, you know, it's easier to read and understand them, even if it's been built by someone else, or even if it's been a while since we built it. It's easier to provide maintenance and support. Uh, it's easier to hand them over to other stakeholders, and it's also easier to, to document them before because, well, the, the framework itself is kind of self-documenting, but it is also standardized, meaning that some chunks of documentation can also be standardized as well. But the most important part of it is that it significantly reduces the time needed for initial development of new flows, as well as support and maintenance of existing flows. Now, certain tools in the automation space already have that out of the box, either you know built by the vendor themselves or built by the community, but then integrated into the tool. Unfortunately, Power Automate Desktop does not. There's no, no official framework or template available for this. There's There are some YouTube videos on how to build something based on something else. But you know there there was no uh, solution available. You know that you could just kind of download and and then start using. And that's why I kind of created it and published it. Right, and the components of a framework like that should basically include some standard things and some things that are you know used frequently within the organization that we use it in. So some some high level standard things that should be everywhere is like you know things like error log handling, logging reading configs from external sources, um, processing work items, sending emails, uh, interacting with certain applications that are used frequently, like web browsers, Excel, you know, some ERP systems, CRMs maybe, or, or things like that, whatever we automate frequently. And very importantly, a template for building anything that's custom in there. So basically, because you know the framework will never actually cover the needs of any full time flow that we might want to build because you know when we build flows we basically just try to automate a task that's just custom you we're creating a custom solution to do something automatically so it's never going to be fully standardized so we will always need to add some custom bits but we want to have a template for that so even those custom bits still follow the same standardized structure right so yeah, that's that's that for the few slides as mentioned, and then yeah, let me switch to a quick demo. So what I did basically, I created a framework uh, in Power Automate Desktop, and I've published it on GitHub uh, a, a few months ago. Basically, there's a repo called Power Automate Desktop Framework. Uh, it's available on GitHub. You'll probably get a link uh, in in the chat, maybe you know later on when when the video is published as well. Um, what it contains is the actual solution uh, packaged so that you can just kind of download this and import it into your environment and start using it. But if you're not on premium or if you don't want to import it with a couple of connection references that it actually requires, there is also the source data over here with all of the uh, code for all of the flows in the framework. And if you've ever worked with uh, Power Automate Desktop, you probably are aware that all of the actions in there are actually written in code that's called Robin. And if you ever copy a subflow with you know, in Power Automate uh, Desktop into a text file, you'll see something like this. And you can also then copy it back 
to the designer to create those actions. So we can, you know, you could just kind of pick up, pick all of these up or the, the ones that you need and just create your flows from scratch if you want. Uh, the repo also contains some samples, some uh, exp explanations on how to use them, and also plenty of readme files to actually you know, start using this, both for building it up from scratch and also for importing the solution itself. Now, when it comes to Power Automate Desktop, uh, what it looks like is essentially something like this. You know, I've initially, the first thing to mention is that I've got a dedicated uh, environment for the framework, and that's a recommendation as well, because, you know, the framework itself is kind of supposed to be used by the makers working in the organization. So whatever environment they, they use to build or run their flows should already be a sort of a production environment for the framework. We, we get a dedicated environment that's the development environment for the framework, where we have it, where we build it, where that's the single source of truth for the code behind the framework. And then whenever we export it to another environment, it should always be exported as a managed solution, even if it's being pushed to a, an otherwise development environment so that it's not modified there, it's just being used. Then when uh, it comes to the actual framework, it contains several you know, flows. The list might expand over time. I might add more features. The idea in here is that I've pushed as much as I could into these sorts of external um, utility flows or microservice flows or whatever you want to call them that are just supposed to be consumed. They just kind of perform a certain task and that's it. So they're, you know, they're quite self-explanatory, like closing a browser, launching a browser, reading configs, sending emails, logging stuff, making screenshots, and so on. And then there's also a couple of flow templates. And these templates are supposed to be copied when we want to build a new flow. So whenever a maker starts working on a new project, they would copy the template and then modify the copy so that the original template stays intact. And they don't need to worry about making any copies of the microservice flows because they're only supposed to be consumed. And now I'm going to just quickly show you a couple of those flows. So for example, one of the microservice flows, one of the essentials is the logger, which is built essentially to log stuff somewhere. So we use it to make runtime logs, to, to log errors and so on. And it currently supports a few different types of logs that, that can be made. You know, logging to a plain text file, a CSV, a database, or a SharePoint list. Probably add Dataverse pretty soon uh, to the list because it's now generally available and you know, can be used in production. Currently not supported yet. And, that, and, and the idea is that we just kind of call it, provide some inputs to it when we run it, you know, like the actual message to be logged, where we want to log it, and the type of logs we want. And then we, you know, it runs, makes the log message, and then we return some outputs at the end. And that's that's the idea for all of those utility flows. Uh, obviously, if you are actually using this in an actual organization, you would probably remove the unnecessary types of logs. This is just, you know, built in a way to support the, the popular needs in, in the community. But if, you know, when you're using it, in actual business case scenarios and actual enterprise environments, probably want to unify the logs you made by all of your makers. So you'd probably just stick to one uh, and remove the others. Uh, and that's a way of customizing it to work for your needs. Right. And then the template itself is essentially built in a way where, you know, we kind of, um, there's there's quite a few subflows when, when you can open it. It might sound daunting that the template it contains 29 subflows, but there's, uh, quite a few of them that we don't need for every single flow. It just kind of contains things that are frequently needed, but never altogether. It contains subflows for interacting with browsers and Excel and so on. So essentially, if we don't use them for the particular flow that we're building, we could just delete those and, and, and remove whatever is un unnecessary. Uh, it also contains... Uh, subflows for both a dispatcher type of a flow and a processor type of flow. So basically for generating work items and inserting them to a queue, and also for processing work items, like picking them up from the queue, doing something with them, a retry functionality as well, and then completing them when they're done. So again, usually only you know a single flow would only do one of these. And so when we start building it, we would remove the unnecessary subflows and then add whatever is the extra bits that we need. Um, most of the subflows are just kind of standardized and they don't even need to be touched. 
Uh, some have some comments where we just where, where it's explained, you know, what needs to be changed, if anything. Uh, and then, you know, there is there is calls for the utility flows, like the logger, for example. The logger flow just calls it to log anything uh, we want, you know, runtime messages, errors, and so on. There is the most important functionality ever is the uh, actual uh, error handling. So we've got error blocks in every single subflow that essentially captures all errors and calls the logger to actually parse them. The logger then uses get last error to actually get the details of the error. So we get all of the information about whatever happened uh, very detailed in our log. And well, as mentioned, one of the most important bits in here is a template for anything custom. So a, a, a custom subflow template, which just you know follows the same structure, has all of the logs uh, at, at the beginning and the end, has the block and so on. It's built to, to just basically make a copy of this in a new subflow and add whatever custom actions we need inside the block, and that's it. And we're, we're kind of ready to use this. And it's then essentially follows the same format, the same structure, uses the same logs, and so on. So, so it's built to be easy to use, basically. And that's that. That's basically what it looks like. Uh, I'll just quickly switch back to the slides, a couple of quick key takeaways. So essentially, if you want to use this, uh, have a dedicated environment uh, as development for the framework. Every other environment where it's used is a sort of a production environment for the framework, should be imported as a managed solution. And when you use it, you uh, make a copy of the flow template and start your project on top of it, on, on the copy. Uh, and the utility or microservice flows are supposed to only be consumed and not copied. And obviously, when you're actually using it, customize it based on the needs of your organization, remove any unnecessary uh, features, add whatever you might need that's that's missing, you know, maybe interactions with certain applications and so on. Fine. And yeah, so if you like this, if you would like to connect with me or follow me, uh, there's a LinkedIn profile QR code. And, and then I've also got a YouTube channel, which currently only holds a single video, but it actually explains the, uh, the, the framework in more depth. So if you're interested, might want to check that out. Uh, and yeah, and then there is the GitHub repo, obviously, where you can pick it up. If you have any feedback, feel free to message me or, or create an action in, in GitHub. I'd appreciate any constructive feedback for, for anything, because I'd like to keep it up to date and improved. Mm -hmm.